Hey everyone, uh, today I'm just going to do a quick video on how you can make a simple tic-tac-toe game. Uh, and I'm going to try to make this as quick and simple as possible, and uh, this will be part one. And in the future I'll go into more depth. Um, so to get started, you're going to want to make a setup just like this. Basically you got two labels here. The, your header label really doesn't matter, your title for the game. Uh, this one you're going to want to name move label, uh, and we'll use that later and then just add nine buttons uh... you can name them b1 to b9 one two three four five six seven eight nine and then add a reset button um, and i just did this beforehand so you don't have to watch me do it out uh... the size here is seventy five by seventy five uh... but it really doesn't matter just as long as they're equally equally sized okay so the first thing we're going to want to do uh, is go to the code and uh... that's not right Okay, so, uh, let me see here. I've got it all, uh, copied and pasted from what I did earlier just to save time again. And I'll talk about all the code I, I add in here. And I'll include it in the, uh, the comments below, too. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to define an integer that just defines which player's turn it is. Uh, so player 1 is 1, player 2 is 2. And we'll use that later, but just for now, that gives us a way to tell our program which player's turn it is. Uh, the other thing we're going to create is a list of integers, player 1 and player 2, which is going to be filled with whatever box they click. Uh, and again, you'll see why we use that more later. Um, so if they click box 1, we'll add 1 to that array. If player 2 clicks box 5, we'll add 5 to that array, and so on. Uh, so the next thing we want is, when they actually click a box, we need something to happen. So, um, let me grab that. So on click. Okay. So you're going to want to create a new class, public string on click, that takes an integer button as the input. And uh, the reason for that is we want to know which button is being pressed. And what it's going to do is if the current player is 1, so if player 1's turn, it's player 1's turn, um, it's going to add to that array whatever button was clicked. Button 5 was clicked, it's going to add button 5 it's going to add 5 to that array we created earlier right here. Um, so the next thing it does if it's player 1, it adds 1 to current player. So now next turn it's player 2. It also is going to change this move label dot text which is right here to uh, it's player 2's turn to move. So player 1 just moved, it becomes player 2's turn and the header goes up there and we return uh, X uh, and I'll show you why that is later but basically that's what we're gonna put into uh, the button that we click and in the same way we've got if current player is 2 uh, we add the button number which we get from here integer button to the array to player 2's array and we subtract 1 <laughs> and we change the label so that it's now player one's turn again we return O uh, which we'll see in a second okay so now we want to actually now that we have that we want to add it to so when the button is actually clicked that's what happens so uh, you can ignore that bottom part for now so the first thing we're going to want is to add this right here so we create a string entry, which is just, I mean, you can name this anything you want. And it takes the result of uh, on click, and uh, 1 is, you know, the current button we have. So this is for button 1. You're going to put 1 right here. So what it'll do is it'll run this procedure on click and send it uh, the integer 1, which will return, since this is 1 here, uh, current player's 1. Uh, or if current players two, it really doesn't matter. But for example, if current player is one, it'll add the button one, and then it'll return x. So we'll get x back, which will be put into here, and then we set b one dot text to x, which will set the text right here to x. So it'll fill that button in. All right, so that's good. So now at this point, we've got that set up, and you're going to want to add this to each button. 
all the way down. So now that we have it so it actually, when you click a button, it'll show X or O, and it'll switch from player one to player two and back and forth, we need a way to determine if somebody actually won the game. Um, so the next thing we're going to want to add in is, uh, let's see, yeah, is game over? So after every move, it's going to check if the game is over or not. So we copy that in there. And again, I'll have all this uh, in the comments for you. So this is a bit bigger. So we've got public void is game over, because we don't want to return anything. It's just checking whether or not the game's over and doing stuff accordingly. So the first thing we want to do is create a new integer uh, array. I called combinations. And uh, we're going to fill it with these are all the possible combinations of uh, what would allow the player to win. So if you had 1, 2, and 3 in his array, he would win 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc. So these are all the possible combinations. So when this is called, when it decides to check if game's over or not, it is going to, um, for each integer, or for, yeah, this is, uh, the, for this for loop, we set the i equal to 0, and each time, as long as i is less than 8, it's going to run this loop. And each time it runs it, it's going to add i, uh, 1 to i. So what this loop is going to do is, first it checks uh, if player 1, which is that array we created, contains uh, like this combination, i0, i1, i2, which is this, this, and this. So the first thing it will check for i0 is the first entry. So if it contains all three of those, we know that he's won the game. And what it'll do is it'll add, uh, change this move label text to player one is one, change this, and then it will change, um, it will uh, display a message box, which, we, uh, yeah, we'll leave that for now, but it'll play a message box as well just to, you know, show you that player one is one. And then we'll do clear board, which we'll need to add. But for now, um, you can see what it does. And the same goes for player two. It'll check if, you know, player one hasn't won, it'll see if player two's won, and do the same thing for them. And if, you know, it hasn't, then I'll increase by one, and it'll check the same for uh, this entry in the array all the way through. And if none of them, you know, are winning entries, then it'll go back and, you know, not do anything pretty much. Just let the game continue. So now that we have this, we're going to add this to um, the end of each of our uh, buttons. And as you can see, I already have it added to these other ones. So that after you actually do the on click, if it fills it with X, before it allows you to do anything else, it's going to check if the game's over or not. Um, so now we need this clear board is the last thing we need. Uh, so that when the game's over, it actually clears the board for you. Or so when you click this reset board button, it'll clear it for you. So let's grab that. And this is pretty simple. Basically, all it's going to do, again, private void clear board. It's just going to clear player 1's array, clear player 2's array, and set all of the buttons to blank from X. And it's also going to set current, one, current player to 1. So at that point, that's pretty much it. You're going to add clear board to all of the buttons and to the um, is game over, um, and just, so it'll check, so, I mean, so if the game actually is over, it'll clear the board for you. So, this should be good and should be working, let's try it out. Press F5 or click here to play it. Yeah, tic-tac-toe, player one's turn, player two's turn, player one, player two, and there we go. We got three in a row, player one is one, click OK, and it clears the board for us. And uh, let's check the reset, too. Actually, I don't know if we did that. Yeah, we set that. So that's the other thing you're going to want to do. Um, is to go into here. Double-click reset board. Yeah, and just add clear board to that. So when it's clicked, it runs that clear board. And uh, you got the blank board again. And that's pretty much it. Again, there's a lot more we can add to this game. And I'm planning to in future tutorials. This is just part one. Uh, for example could add it so when this happens it highlights these squares possibly add a scoreboard um, or even AI so you could do a you versus the computer game 
Uh, so we'll see in the future, but hopefully you like this quick little tutorial and hopefully you, you learned something. Thanks for watching.